Justin here today we're looking at walking bass and we're going to be doing it on a tune that I wrote called Fall Off Trees which just happens to have exactly the same chords as the jazz standard Autumn Leaves uh, and uh, if you're going to learn this you really want to get the tab from my website because it's going to make it a whole lot easier uh, if I try and go through it really really slowly it's just going to get really boring so uh, I'm going to go through it slowly and explain what's going on but you definitely want to have the tab up there it's going to be a huge help for you so before we get to a close-up and I take you through how to play this tune a couple of really important points uh, first thing is the bass is a lot more important than the chords so if you're accompanying someone you really got to make sure that that rhythm of the bass is really solid because remember bass is part of the rhythm section so it's not worth kind of messing up the rhythm in order to try and get a chord right so uh, you know the chords are very short and uh, you know th th they're kind of almost a percussion effect really more than anything it's really it's all about that bass and making sure the bass is really strong so uh, you know one of the things you want to be thinking about is trying to get a nice sound and a good tone out of your thumb there when you're doing the bass and not really worrying too much about the chords it's you know part of it but it's not the most important part um, also if you want to get into this you definitely want to check out and do some transcribing of some bass players because uh, really this kind of lesson is uh, designed as a kind of an introduction into doing some walking bass just to kind of get you the idea and get going because I had a few ch kind of studies like this that I I learned from when I was getting into it but uh, really it was when I started transcribing some walking bass that it kind of made a bit more sense um, it's also, I've, I've found, actually just playing that at the beginning, I found quite difficult because I'm used to kind of improvising with it and actually I, I wrote down an improvisation and, and then found that it, it was actually difficult to do it a second time, which is I found kind of funny. But I think that's an important thing to get to grips with as well, is that th this is a kind of an improvised thing and learning it as a study is just to kind of give you some ideas on, you know, how you might you know make the the different changes and the different paths that you can get from one to the other and uh, I think one of the best ways to learn it is just to do some you know and, and see you know don't try and analyze it too much just look at the patterns of, of how you get from one chord to another which is what you'll do if you transcribe some real bass uh, you know some proper bass walking lines from uh, you know for some records that you like or whatever you know so uh, that's enough talking for now. I will be doing some more lessons specifically on the, the kind of the technique part and, and different uh, ways of transitioning from one to the other. But as we've done uh, a walking, ba uh, as we've done a thing on autumn leaves recently, I figured that uh, you might like to have a go at doing a, a set piece on this one as well. Uh, so uh, let's get to a close up. So before we go into any more detail, I just want to do a playthrough nice and slow for those guys that just want to use the tab and use this video as a reference for fingering. Uh, I'm going to play it exactly the same as the tab now. I think in the intro I might have made a few boo-boos and just uh, kind of uh, rolled through it a little bit. But uh, what I'll do now is try and play it nice and slowly exactly like the tab. Um, the fingerings do change a little bit sometimes, so uh, you know, if you find a different fingering that works for you, then go for it. This is just uh, the one that I happen to be doing this time. So uh, starting off with this little uh, A minor, here we go.
So there is just a fairly slow playthrough. Hopefully you kind of caught most of that. Uh, I'll try and give you a little bit of a talk through it now as I go along. So uh, the first uh, chord, this A minor, of course, normally played like this, but uh, when you're doing a walking bass, a lot easier just to use the bar. You shouldn't find you have too many trouble with extra notes ringing out because uh, you know thumb is playing the bass and those three fingers are playing the chord and uh, the other one shouldn't be ringing out. And the chord's very short. So if you did hit some extra ones, it, uh, you'd probably get away with it. Uh, but this first one is just a little step up going into the D, uh, the D9 chord. To the G major 7 with a little chromatic movement down to the C major. F sharp minor 7 flat 5. Now very often with those kind of transitions, I might swap the finger because it's just moving up like that. I might use the same finger all the way. Or I might change here. Doesn't really matter which one you want to do, you know. There's a really nice big chromatic line up to the E minor. Okay, now uh, second time through. Instead of approaching from below, we're approaching from above. Otherwise, it's the same. Here from above, D9. Now, this is just a little kind of extra bit where I'm playing the bass chord, sliding back, and then playing it on the return. One, and two, three, on the G major nine. Bass, chord, slide, chord, bass, C major 9. Nice little bit of walkies there. Then the F sharp minor 7 flat 5. Same thing again. B7 to E minor. Going into the B section, F sharp minor. You can put that on as well or just works just as well to B7, slightly different pattern but nothing uh, too tricky, E minor again, there's the A minor, now again a different path to get to D9, okay so the first time we had, second time, third time, there's lots of different avenues that you can travel to get from chord to chord, continue on the D9, Again, now we've got a little chromatic line to get to our G major 7. Okay, it's just staying on the G major. You could have done all sorts of different things there, but this time we just went up the arpeggio. You know, notes, mainly notes from the chord. Then the F sharp minor again. B7. Now here, it's a fast chord movement, so chord, bass, chromatic movement into the A, and then we've got a lead from below to get to the D minor. Above the A, below the D, above the G, below the F sharp minor. B7, another different way of getting to our E minor that time. I just put that little thing there so you can turn it around again. Well, I hope that wasn't too fast or too slow. I don't want to labor the point here, but uh, it's an improvised form. So the idea of learning these studies is to kind of give you an insight into like a starting point, really. You know, uh, I had a book of different walking bass kind of chord studies and chord melody things that I went through. and. And through learning a set piece, it kind of gives you some clues. But because it's not set in stone here, you can, uh, you know, you can adapt it to fit, you know, what you like. You can make it a little bit simpler. You can make it more difficult. You can change some of the chords. You can introduce substitutions. There's a lot of different things that you can apply straight away as soon as you have the knowledge to apply those kind of things, of course. But uh, this is a good kind of starting point, you know. And if you're new to jazz and you've you've played through straight and you've learned the chords and the melody and you want uh, something a little bit more interesting.
interesting to start playing with if you're jamming with someone while they're doing a solo. Walking bass is great because it's like doing a continuous solo, but where you've got to be really solid with the rhythm and not miss a beat, you know. So I find it a really good fun thing if I'm having a jam with someone. I love doing the walking bass bit because I'm happy to sit on that and they can solo as long as they like because it's really fun. It's kind of, you know, the the, the the proper serious bass players make beautiful melodies out of it and uh, I think for people like me that are not kind of professional bassists it's uh, a bit like a puzzle trying to find different ways of connecting the chords up. It's a little, well for me, and I should probably shouldn't admit it, but it's a little less uh, hearing the melodies that the bass is making, a little bit more making sure that I get to the to the root notes in the right place so it sounds like it's the right tune because if you, uh, it's easy to think I, you know, when I was first starting out into, into jazz, that walking bass was really random and they were just kind of wandering wherever they liked. But there are, there's a lot more pattern to it that it, it needs to be adhered to, to to outline the harmony, otherwise the soloists get a bit freaked out. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big study, this, and this is just a little introduction. You know, I'm not passing this off as, you know, I'm the grandmaster of walking bass because it couldn't be further from the truth. But I really enjoyed having a couple of studies like this when I was getting into it, and uh, I'm kind of hoping that you do too. So uh, have fun with it. Don't forget, tabs on the website and a whole bunch more info as well. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.